how are you doing? Welcome back to the show floor here at the .local London. We do hope you're enjoying all the conversations and all the guests that we've had today. Thank you for staying put with us throughout the everything that we're doing today. Now, we earlier on today at the keynote, again, expanding on what we learned briefly at the keynote, uh, queryable encryption came up. I am um, joined by Ken White, our security specialist here. And uh, Ken, queryable encryption, what's it all about? <laughs> so queryable encryption is a way to protect our uh, customers' most sensitive work. Uh, so we see a lot of this in uh, the banking world, in, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the energy fields, in the DOD. Uh, but really, everyone has sensitive data, right? Everyone has sure. some kind of crown jewels that they want to protect. And so the idea with portable encryption is that um, you can you can save uh, records in an encrypted format, but the database doesn't learn what that is, and they don't it, it doesn't have keys. And so if there's a, if there's an attack, there's a compromise on the database side. If there's you know someone comes up and, and black blackmails one of our senior engineers or holds a gun to our CEO's head and says, "Give me this data from you know Bank X or whatever." Uh, we say, fine, here's a, here's a copy of the data, but it's all encrypted. Good luck with that. Uh, so, so that's the, that's the, the basic premise. But that's the, the short version, because <laughs> I was, and I think it was at a prior dot .local in London that we launched queryable encryption a couple of years ago. It was, yeah. yeah. We, we take the stuff really, so there's a lot of things in the cloud world where you can kind of iterate and move really quickly and sort of mm -hmm. move on the fly. With cryptography and with security, you want to be very deliberate and sure. really have really rigorous, uh, you know, engineering practices. You want to analyze things very properly. You want to have lots of third party reviews. You want to be very <clears throat> pardon me, and careful about what you do. <clears throat> and so we had it in a uh, preview form for about a year mm -hmm. uh, and then we GA it last year. That's so what we've just announced today is that, <clears throat> let me, um, is that range support, so being able to do flowers, you know, Searching for everyone over 25 to 50, every financial balance, it's you know between 10,000 and million dollars. Okay. Um, every every audit record, every sales transaction that happened between this date and that date okay. uh, is supported. But in a way that the database never understands what's being asked for, mm. and, and even if you have <clears throat> at a DBA level problems, you don't learn anything. Um, this is the thing that. And I spent, I, I don't know what event we were at, but I shared a booth with Cynthia, who was a prior PM, or probably still is the PM in, in this space. But, and I remember poking her all the time going, how does it work? How does it work? And so to me, you know, in that entire query round set, nothing is exposed. It's like magic. It's still being able to query, but nothing has been exposed. And your data is secure in transit, at rest, and within the query itself, correct? That's right. So even if... <clears throat> Pardon me. Even if the network is compromised, even if TLS is broken, even if someone gets a copy of the disk and steals it, yeah. or, or encryption rest was compromised, it doesn't matter because um, it's it's similar to end-to-end -end encryption like you'd find in WhatsApp or Signal, mm -hmm. where the idea is you've got two parties communicating. Right. Um, anyone that eavesdrops over the network, um, if I haven't turned my phone off and you've sent me a message, that message is sitting on a server somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter if you know if I don't log on for a little bit. If they had access to the server, they still can't see it. So it's a very similar idea to that. Um, what's unique about Corval Encryption is it was built from the ground up for mm -hmm. high performance database search. So there's all kinds of uh, encryption sort of libraries and techniques out there, but very few are, are meant for uh, you know generalized search for operational workload. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot in the kind of academic world that are kind of toy type. Um, you know, use cases where like, right, right. I've got a hundred records and I've got one laptop and one database server, but as soon as you get into distributing systems, as soon as you get into, no, no, I've got, you know, threaded web services, I'm, I'm, I've got high key currency, I've got tons of users, those things break down. And then also there are some encrypted uh, search techniques that <laughs> may take seconds or minutes mm -hmm. to get an answer back. Well, that's just not realistic for right. operation. And I suppose a testament to how serious we take this is that we have a research group for, for cryptography. That's right. And, and have built this. And when we put it out first, we also open sourced our method, right? That's right. Because it needed to be up to scrutiny. Lots of Yeah, exactly. So we worked with a group out of Brown University called the Encrypted Systems Lab. 
right. when we built our first generation client-side encryption. Mm -hmm. um, and what they did that was really useful was they helped us think about the model. What are the promises we can make? Right. What are the things that we can't guarantee? You know, what, it's important to understand what you don't get from this particular security control. Mm -hmm. That collaboration was really, really positive. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and they were working in a lot of, uh, you know, other sort of advanced tech. <clears throat> hey, pardon me. No worries. Um, and so about two years after we launched, they had a major breakthrough. We talked to them about it, and then eventually we acquired the company. Mm -hmm. So yeah, today we have uh, an in-house uh, cryptography research group. It's headed up by Sandy Kamara and Tariq Mwataz. Um, people who have been in the field for, you know, in Sandy's case, over 20 years. Wow. They, they, wow. He literally pioneered the field of encrypted search uh, when he was back at, at Microsoft Research. And, and so a lot of the, the knowledge, the basis, the sort of formalisms have been out there for 15, 20 years. Yes, yes. Now, yes. What we, you know, were able to do is to operationalize that into a practical database and put things in place that made it easier for developers to use. Because a lot of times, you know, uh, tech uh, products put a huge burden on the developer. They have to become cryptography experts. Mm -hmm. They have to mm -hmm. understand different encryption modes and key sizes and all this sort of thing. And we said, well, what, what if we made this very opinionated based on conservative, you know, sort of cryptographer approved right. uh, values so that basically you set up a little boilerplate code and then as a developer, if you want to insert a document, you just write an insert statement like you're used to. You want to query a bunch of documents, you should be able to query without having to think too much about, uh, you know, the underlying crypto. And so, yeah, a after that acquisition, we recruited more uh, cryptography researchers. I think there's like five PhD cryptographers in the group. Wow. Okay. They're publishing papers, they're leading, uh, you know, academic conferences. Um, it, it's, we now have like visiting scientists and student interns. I mean, it's a proper full-blown R&D group. It's, it's, so. it's wholly strategic for us, given the clients that we have. I mean, I know that, you know, certain institutions and certain industries, financial, medical, et cetera, are reluctant to go to the cloud or were reluctant to right. go to the cloud. But with this approach, essentially, it's pretty much the last barrier in being able to say, we don't want our, our data being shipped around like this, correct? Yeah, that's right. And so while we started with some pretty sophisticated use cases, everybody's got crown jewels. Everybody has some kind of PII data or, or sensitive data they want protected. But, but our, our sort of more high-end, sophisticated customers said, look, we're not, this isn't some James Bond or science fiction scenario. We have entire nation states that are targeting our platform. Sure. When you're moving hundreds of billions of dollars a day mm -hmm. through capital markets, that's not fiction. You, you really do have to kind of think about that. And, and none of that to say that we've we sort of developed some magic silver bullet that'll cure all problems, but rather that we took a very disciplined, careful approach of confidentiality, of keeping your secret secret, keeping the secret from us. You don't have to trust us um, that we'll do the right thing because there's also, there's the, there's the sort of hackers, there's the hacker side, but then there's the, uh, what happens if I'm compelled as a service provider? Sure. What if we, we get a court order or some law right. enforcement thing or, or you're under litigation and um, you know a judge says, I need a forensic hold, MongoDB, give me a copy of this customer's data. And you, fine, we'll give you a copy of it, but it's encrypted, good luck with that. <laughs> it, what it, but what it really means is that the customer controls their data exactly. full stop. Yeah. Unless they supply the decryption in their keys, it, it, it doesn't matter whether, uh, again, our CEO is held hostage or yeah, we no root in uh, whatsoever. That's right. E even if yeah. someone had root level privileges on the virtual machine, even if they had hypervisor level access, it, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, they're not seeing the clear text data and they don't have access to that piece. Super secure. Mm -hmm. So we, we announced range queries before that it was exact match. It was. Yeah. So range queries allows, as you said, a couple of examples, right. you know, search for transactions between this value and that value, et cetera, right. as well too. Is there uh, more to come, full text search for it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so Query Mode Encryption is, an, is a platform for expressive search. Okay. So we're, um, you know, we're hoping in the next, in the first half of, of next year to introduce text support, uh, prefix, suffix, substring support. Yeah. We'll GEA that after some reasonable amount of time. And then, yeah, then, then, it, then it's open. We, you know, we're potentially considering vector. We're potentially considering uh, you know, uh, Geocode, it's, it's an expressive platform, so we're super excited about it. Excellent. And where do developers go to find out more, Ken? Where, sure. where would they go today? Yeah, so just query uh, MongoDB queryable encryption. We've got docs and tutorials and code snippets. 
you can copy and paste. Uh, if you uh, Google the MongoDB cryptography group, lots of technical papers. If you want to look at the formal proofs, you want to understand the underlying math, that's your source. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Well, listen, Ken, this has been an eye-opener. Uh, I, I can't say that I still understand how it's done. It looks like magic to me, but it's great to see it advancing and what you've added with the range queries, and I look forward to seeing what more. Thank you very much for joining us on the MongoDB live stream. You're very welcome. Thank you. Excellent. And from the show floor, we will take a short break. And we'll be back very soon with another guest. Thank you. Have a look, have a look.